everyone and welcome to this week's episode of This Racing Life. A commonly asked question is what happens to the racehorses once their career on the racetrack comes to an end? And on this week's episode we're going to take you on an in-depth tour to visit some of these wonderful horses having successful second careers and where they are now. Here's a taster of what you've got to look forward to. You know, these horses, you know, did, did their best for us during their racing careers and, uh, you know, without the horse we wouldn't have an industry, would we? And, and we've got to look after them. What I do like about the horses is they've seen a lot, they've been to the races, they've been out on the roads, you know, they've got great temperaments and I've just, yeah, I've got a passion for x race horses. I'm a big believer in doing a little bit of showing when you first get them, just to educate them, let them know they can stand and almost switch off a little bit and just get used to standing in a ring with other horses and not having to worry about going down the race, racing lines. I love how they're just pure athletes. You can't get a horse that's more athletic than them and they're so intelligent and they just, all the ones I've had, they just try their best. So everything's new and different to them, but as soon as you show them something new, they just try each time to improve and learn. Anyone can qualify, anyone can enter. That is why the ROI is such an amazing um, you know, society, because anybody can register their ROI, no matter what they've done, how much ability they had in racing. A lot of horses I've seen that are going to do show jumping, they've entered trials, all sorts, and they're so successful and often beating those that you would think would normally reign in that kind of environment. So they are so versatile and it's just lovely to see so many out of race and doing fabulous jobs. New Beginnings is a registered charity that specialises in retraining and rehoming former racehorses. Based outside York, it is run by the husband and wife team of Kevin and Pam Atkinson and enjoys considerable support from the racing community. So Pam, you set up New Beginnings about 11 years ago now. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do here? Well, we are a registered charity and we retrain and rehome former racehorses. So, horses come to us from um, either straight from racing when they finish training or from homes after racing. Uh, quite often, the homes we get them from are homes that have broken down. So, sometimes people have taken on a, a, a racehorse, a thoroughbred, and it's a bit too much for them, or their circumstances might have changed. They could have lost their confidence or lost their health or whatever. So, we get horses in from all different avenues. But every horse here at New Beginnings is a former racehorse. And who have we here then? Well, this is Chill the Kite, who's pulling faces <laughs> and being cheeky. And this is Chatsworth Express. So that we call him Chill and we call it um, Chatsworth Express Charlie. And how long have these two horses been with you? We've had Chill for quite a while. He's one of our ambassador horses. So he was a successful racehorse. He was uh, trained by Hugh Morrison and he raced, uh, he did win at Ascot. Um, and he has been out representing New Beginnings as an ambassador. He, um, he's been to shows, he's paraded on race courses um, and he's a really good example of the versatility of horses that can be retrained to do a different job after racing. Yeah and, and touching on that you work quite closely with the ROR which is the Retraining of Race Horses um, Association and you were actually at Aintree last week weren't you at their championship show? We were, it was fantastic to see so many former race horses out there doing all different disciplines. Yeah, we're one of the 10 accredited centres for the ROR in the country, so we're very proud of that. We work very close with the ROR, and hiya, chill. And we, uh, yeah, we, we do a lot of work with the ROR. The ROR Championship Show is probably the best showcase of former racehorse we have in this country. The ROR, over the, year, over the last, I don't know how long they've been doing them, five or six years, have done a fantastic job of creating a need for these horses by creating the show series and the dressage series so that people that take on a former racehorse have got somewhere to compete it so they're not competing in the early days in mainstream they've got specific classes to go for and it really has created a need these these horses have become very um adaptable and it shows that it really does show the true versatility of them because they could do anything you know these horses train retrain properly can do anything because like you say they've got the intelligence They've got the personality. They've got, you know, they're athletes. They can do nearly anything, can't you? And this little fella loves going back to race courses. We took him to parade in hand two weeks ago and he absolutely loved it. We dare ride him because we didn't know what he was going to do going back into that environment. He'll be ridden next time. But he was just so chill he actually rode in the parade ring. He was that relaxed. Whereas you take chill back to the race course and he's on his toes. He you know, knows what he's there for. He's, you know, he's yeah, he's... He's, he's more, he wants to be on, he wants to be off, he wants to be doing something. We've done rid ridden parades with Chill and he's great, provided we've got the right jockey on him. Um, because he's, he, he turns into a showman, you get him into the parade ring, 
because he's got his leg, your legs on the side of it, thinking riding conventionally, he's just, look at me, whereas Nico's just chilled and relaxed and he just likes people. As a trustee, you know, it's my job to support New Beginnings and support uh, Pam and Kevin. Uh, they do a fantastic job and we have regular trustees meetings to discuss, you know, sort of policy and where we're going, etc. And so it's just, it's just great to be involved and, you know, to go out on, on, on the various Yorkshire courses because we get great support from York, the Yorkshire race courses and from, from Skybet and from individuals. And uh, I think the word is getting out more and more about the work that we do here at New Beginnings and, and, and the fact that, you know, it's the, it, we're an important part of, of the, the whole racing industry. We're in the industry ourselves and we know what happens to these horses. But it's just fantastic to show people that perhaps don't see this side actually what these horses can go on to achieve in a second career. Some horses are obviously retired before they see a race course where they just don't have the ability but some horses have really long careers win plenty of races and still go on to have fantastic second careers. Yeah and it's great to see isn't it you know and um, so from, from, from coming down from being race horses that they can go on to have a second career and um, you know it, it's, it's the, 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 the possibilities for some of these horses are, are, are endless you know from dressage and eventing etc so you know, it, it's great and, um, you know, these horses, you know, did, did their best for us during their racing careers and, uh, you know, w without the horse we wouldn't have an industry, would we? And, and we got to look after them and, uh, and they certainly looked after here at New Beginnings and uh, it, it's wonderful to see that they, they can, some can, as you say, have another career. Catherine Dobson has run the Yorkshire Racehorse retraining and rehoming for many years and has a vast experience of finding new homes and careers for many former racehorses. She's rehomed over a thousand horses and has worked in the racing industry for many, many years herself. So Catherine, this is the home of the Yorkshire Racehorse Rehoming and Retraining Centre and it's a beautiful place. How long have you been here? We've been here about six or seven weeks. Um, it's a bit of an ongoing progress at the moment. Um, We've got big plans for the, for the place. Um, it's you know as you can see it's nice and quiet um, for, for the for the racehorses to come here. We've got plenty of land. And before here, you were based at Richmond Equestrian Centre, I believe. For how I long? I was at Richmond Equestrian Centre for about 12 years, 12, 13 years, which was an it was an amazing place. Um, and but unfortunately, Paul Hodgson, who ran the place, it was sold. And then we moved to a local yard um, in Catterick and I was based there for about three years. But um, myself and my partner Michael have bought this place now, um, let's say six, six weeks ago. And we've, we've got big plans for the place and hopefully we'll be able to take some more horses on here. Yeah, and you've obviously been in racing, I know you've worked for Carl Burt for over 25 years now. And yep. It's obviously something you feel very passionate about and being in the industry yourself, you can see the potential in these horses. Oh, definitely. You know, we, we get some lovely horses in that go on to do lots of different careers. T to be honest, what I do like about the horses is they've seen a lot, they've been to the races, they've been out on the roads, you know, they've got great temperaments. And I've just, yeah, I've got a passion for ex-race horses. And how many, roughly, how many horses do you think you've probably rehomed over the years? Thousands. Thousands. Yeah, I started off probably over 20 years ago, rehoming for, for Carl um, back in Newmarket. And then I started, when we moved to Yorkshire, um, I rented a few stables off Carl actually. We had an isolation yard and I started rehoming from there. And then um, we moved to Richmond Equestrian Centre. But yeah, th thousands. Yeah, and I probably know where most of those horses are now. So these two heads looking over the door now towards us, can you tell us a little bit about these two? Yeah, we've got two two-year-olds, unraced two-year-olds, that were unfortunately too slow for racing. Um, we've got the first one here, which is a Port's Voice filly, and she came from Jed O'Keeffe's. Um, I try and help Jed and Andrew out a lot with their rehoming, um, but she, she's she's lovely. Yeah. So she she's out in the field now. She'll be out in the field for a year to mature. And we've got the big girl behind you. She is a big girl. <laughs> which is she is by acclamation, and she came from Carl's, and again she was just too big. Yeah. Yeah. Too big and slow. But I'm sure we shall make a nice event horse. Oh, she's beautiful. She we? is. We do see this. I mean, some horses just aren't good enough and they are finished Absolutely. After yeah. a couple, you know, before they even start on the track. But yeah. it just shows that given a bit of time, they can then go on to develop to have a successful career later Definitely. in life. You know, with a couple of years out in the field and these will come back in as four-year-olds and I'm sure they'll um, go on to better things. 
I'm Roth Bayer, 17 year old son of Al Flora. He was formerly trained by Andrew Baldin, Jenny Candlish, and later in his career, Dan Skelton. I'm Roth Bay won four of his 25 races under rules, including three times over fences. He is now making quite a name for himself on the ultra competitive showing scene. I got him from the Skeltons when I worked there. He uh, retired at 11. He won a few races for them and uh, Jenny Candlish previously to Dan. Um, the owners very kindly uh, gifted him to me when he retired because I, I loved him so much um, and I rode him every day and he was the first winner I ever led up so he's quite precious um, so I was very very lucky to be gifted him. And he's a bit of a character I think you told me when you actually <laughs> rode him at Dan's yard. Yeah so my very very first day working for Dan um, he was the first horse I sat on I think it was first slot and I trotted around the rounds doing the warm-up and he actually whipped round and buried me in front of everyone I was so embarrassed <laughs> um, but yeah I think I fell in love with him from that day really. He's been very successful in his second chosen career and can you tell us about a few of his highlights so far? Yeah, so um, I do all the ROR showing se uh, series with him. So he does the uh, veteran finals, the challenge finals um, and the uh, amateur finals. So he's qualified for the ROR champs every year since I've had him um, at Aintree. So that's quite special to get go and ride at that um, amazing race course. So he has been second in the veteran final um, and reserve champion two years ago. Um, He's actually qualified for Horse of the Year show this year in the Work and Show Horse class. So um, that's a pretty big feat for an X Race horse because there's no more X Race horses that have qualified for that class. So that's pretty amazing. Um, but he's the most consistent ROR on the circuit and you know, very precious. <laughs> yeah, and it's a fantastic achievement. Like you say, qualifying not only for Horse of the Year show, but for a final, which isn't exclusively for X yeah. Race horses. And it just shows the versatility, doesn't it? And how much ability and potential they have to go on to have these second careers mm, absolutely like he fell straight into it um doing loads of flat work schooling taking him uh, cross country schooling show jumping he just took to, took to it like a duck to water so i have been very lucky you know some take a bit of extra time but he was super on the ball and really easy so i've been very lucky <laughs> and how long have you had him now so i've had him six years now um going into the seventh so yeah, he's uh, part of the furniture. He isn't going anywhere. So the second of your horses is short flight. We can see him just sunbathing there behind <laughs> you. And he's a uh, nine-year-old now. He won a couple of races and he was from the Danny Brookyard. Yeah, so um, I took him home September, October last year um, when he retired um, from Dan's yard when we were riding out. I spotted him. He's quite flashy, um, but he's won with a bright future. He's got a lot of ability and um, he'll take a bit of time. He's a big raw horse, but he's definitely got... Got it there, how many shorts? <laughs> and um, how long have you had him then? Did you get him pretty much after his last run? Yeah, so he ran, I think, two days before we got him. Um, and Danny was like, can you take him home? I was like, yeah, absolutely, you can come home with me. So he's just been thrown out in the field for the winter and then drags back in, try and get him show jumping through this winter when we've got time in between racing, so. And what will your sort of aims kind of classes for him be for the showing so season? So I'm gonna try and do the ROR uh, show jumping club and bronze league um, they qualify for the finals at Stoneleigh so the British show jumping finals at Stoneleigh and the ROR champs at Aintree in August um, so I'm going to try and get as many points gathered up as possible and try and you know take him up the ranks maybe start with 90 a meter and then maybe get hop up to 110 so yeah, fingers crossed, try and qualify. <laughs> and it's fantastic the finals are held at such prestigious places. Like you said, the national championships down at Stonely and Aintree. Mm. It just gives you that bit of an incentive, doesn't it, to compete at these really prestigious venues? Yeah, definitely. I mean, anyone can qualify, anyone can enter. That is why the ROI is such an amazing, um, you know, society, because anybody can register their ROI, no matter what they've done, how much ability they had in racing. Um, and there's so many series and leagues, such as show jumping. I mean, they do eventing leagues. Uh, everything endurance so it is amazing incentive for people to you know get out there with their ROR's and um, you know get competing so yeah it's amazing. Oneidin, a four-year-old son of lethal force. He didn't trouble the start in two starts under rules starting out his racing career but he's now started being retrained and did very well in his first next-gen young event horse class. He looks to have a really exciting future in the eventing scene. At the end of December um, Catherine showed us a picture and straight away I just said, right, I'll have him. <laughs> Let's take a gamble and been the best gamble I've ever taken, really. And um, what was what was the first step you sort of did when you got him home? Just let him chill out. Um, just just let him have a life in the field, really. Um, although it was hard because it was winter. But um, yeah, he just, just chilled out and just let him be a horse and 
and then I started to bring him bring him in again um, late March but I literally just did hacking um, and then I gave him another break because of the second lockdown we had so he had about four months or so off um, and then I fetched him back in this March end of March um, and did some real work with him and he's just come on amazing like he's just like a sponge <laughs> yeah and you've just started competing i mm -hmm. saw he was very successful in the next gen class yep. that's held at Al alnwick ford mm -hmm. um and what are your sort of goals with him now for the future well i would like to have a good ROR. that looks really appealing because i think he's got the ability to to do it um we just we just need to work with him and obviously i remember he's he's young um so i'm mainly just taking it slowly with him the slower the better really yeah, and he's um, still a young horse, he's only mm -hmm. four, um, exactly. but he looks like he's got tons of potential. He's got a real pop in him as oh, well, and, yeah. and hopefully he's going to have a big future ahead of him. Yeah, he's very, he's very honest. Um, I've been out on pleasure rides and there was a big wall and I just pointed about it when he just jumped it. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. He's, he's, he's great. Like. Backpack Pester, an 11-year-old son of a teeth. He was trained by Kevin Ryan and had his last run back in 2014. He's now made a massive impact in the dressage scene, competing in many prestigious finals across the country. He's clearly absolutely thriving on his new career and I'm sure there's plenty of success for him in the future in the dressage world. We've had him, it will be five years in October and we, we got him to do a little bit of jumping with and dressage, but dressage is definitely his thing. Um, and he's, yeah, he's, the last couple of years he's really sort of upped his game and enjoying it. Yeah, and you've just returned from the ROR Championships, which were held down at Aintree Racecourse on the Equestrian Centre side. And did you have some success down at that show? Yeah, he, he was he was very good. We were unfortunately we weren't in the top ten, but we were in the top twenty in both our classes. Um, and it's a big competition. There was forty odd horses in each class, so to be in the top twenty, you know, the top 50, half of it is just fantastic. So. And what sort of goals do you have for him for the future? You're just going to stick to the dressage and showing side of things. Dressage mainly. He's he's very talented and he's. He's learnt his flying changes, um, <laughs> so I think now he's, we've got to start and look at the levels and start and move him up through those levels and give him more to think about. He gets bored very easily, so we need to keep challenging him. Yeah, I think obviously they're, they're very intelligent, these thoroughbreds, and having been in, um, in training, they have a routine and they have work every day and they just thrive off the work, which you could see that he does as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm a big believer in keeping them in a routine. I, you know, he's fed at a certain time in the morning he goes out he knows what the job is um, and we try to stick to that because that's the use to that through racing and I don't see the point in sort of changing things so yeah he, he loves his routine and he knows exactly what we're doing and you've just had well four weeks into having another racehorse you've just got from Rebecca Menzies yard yes Can you tell us a yeah. little bit about that one yes we've just got um, red-headed tiger he's with literally four weeks to the day um, he he ran four times and really wasn't very enthusiastic and um, so he's he's the next one here ready to to progress he'll he'll be in the field now until autumn and then we'll start and, and do something with him um, he's a bit bigger than Chester so um, he's uh, he's got a lot of growing to do so. and what sort of route will you go down with him will it be the same sort of dressage showing side yeah or? definitely um, I'm a big believer in doing a little bit of showing when you first get them just to educate them let them know they can stand and almost switch off a little bit and just get used to standing in a ring with other horses and not having to worry about going down the race racing line so yeah it's just a little bit of just calming them down switching off and then he'll start his basic schooling over the winter months. Yeah, and the ROR is obviously a fantastic organisation and it gives these thoroughbreds something to aim for with the finals at prestigious places such as the National Championships down at Stoneleigh and at Aintree Equestrian Centre. Yeah. And it's obviously, yeah. it, it gives you something to aim for, doesn't it? This is it. It's, it's, the, the ROR is just amazing and it's done so much for the, the ex-race horses. Um, and there's so much to to work for with the education, there's um, there's clinics, there, there's lots going on and there's so much there to take these horses to and educate them going forward um, and British Dressage also have the associate thoroughbreds so Chester's now qualified for those in October as well so we go to Leicester in October for that one um, so there's lots of opportunities now for the thoroughbreds to do all different things.
Sterling Silver, a seven-year-old son of Saki Secret. He won two of his 15 starts under rules. He started out his career under the guidance of Richard Hannon, and later in his racing career, he was trained by Ben Haslam. This handsome gelding has started his second career in British eventing, has had a very successful start so far, and looks to have loads of progression for the future. This year, we came third in the BE80 Science Supplements Cup, and we've also come eighth and twelfth in our couple of first B90s, which we've gone clear cross country on, which he loves. Fantastic. And how long have you had him? I've had him just three years now. Three years. Yeah. And he won twice under rules, I saw. He had a couple of different trainers, and you got him from Ben Haslam. And what are your future goals for him? Are you going to carry on through the ranks of the eventing world? Yeah, hopefully. He's uh, my forever horse, so there's no rush. Uh, I just want to build up through BE, um, hopefully this year, carry on 90s, go up to 100s, and I'd love to do a BE novice one day if I'm brave enough, well, <laughs> but he definitely is. He's yeah, he, definitely he looks brave fantastic. Enough. And the other horse you have is a recent horse from Ireland? Yeah, he's a recent horse, so we've just been bringing him on this summer, and hopefully he'll get out venting now in the autumn, and uh, he's starting out at B80. And what's his name? His name is Silver the Fixer, and we call him Corky. And how long have you had him? Uh, since November. Okay, so you're yeah. just going to basically just get to know him and then just take him steady and Yeah, hopefully... I just think it's nice for them not to have to rush and they really enjoy the process of learning the new, the new job. And you've had X-Race horses in the past as well, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, my first one I got when I was 11, so he was my first horse off ponies and he taught me a lot. He was fantastic and I did all of Pony Club, show jumping and eventing with him. Uh, he was called the Tax Man. And Hannah, what do you enjoy most about retraining these racehorses? I love how they're just pure athletes. You can't get a horse that's more athletic than them. And they're so intelligent. And they just, all the ones I've had, they just try their best. So everything's new and different to them. But as soon as you show them something new, they just try each time to improve and learn. And it's just so rewarding having something to learn all the time and something new and easy to work with because they want to learn and they make it feel easy because they've got that athleticism there already. Um, yeah, they're just amazing. <laughs> and obviously the racehorses, they thrive off work. They're used to a routine, aren't they, when they're in the racing environment. Do you, what do you find most challenging about them once they come into this different environment, having to adapt to a sort of different way of life? Uh, yeah, I think adapting to life. So I do try and keep them out as much as possible, but you've got to get them used to that first. But once they're used to living out, that really helps them and keeps them moving. Um, I'd say probably Diet is quite a difficult challenge just to get them used to lots of grass and hay and things but you've got to remember they're not meant to look fat, they're fine looking fit and well and um, he's, he's really easy now, like he's happy in his stable out the field and he just loves attention so as long as he's got attention he's quite happy <laughs> wherever he is. <laughs> Good boy. Bywell Bow. He won four times over hurdles from 40 race course starts and he earned almost £60,000 in prize money. Now at 22 years young, the Lord American Gelding is going strong as a dressage horse. He's enjoyed loads of success under his rider Hayley Jackson. He's still thoroughly enjoying it and I'm sure that he'll enjoy much success in the future in the years to come. We tried a few things first, did not go to plan. Very quickly learned what our strengths were and dancing was definitely it. Um, it's been a fantastic career, we've been everywhere, done everything. Um, <laughs> we're winding down a bit, but we're still going. He's still, when you have your good days, don't you? We still like to go out and dance around. And he won four times under rules. He ran in a couple of bumpers and then he went on to have a successful career over the hurdles. And it, what sort of attributes do you need to be a dressage horse? Everything that a racehorse doesn't have. So obviously when they come out of racing, they're long, lean, bum high, things aren't in the right place. If you look at a dressage horse like Pumpkin and Bledro, completely different. So it's just a slow training game. It's back to basics, undoing everything they've learned and starting from the beginning. Some of the build-wise, you have to compensate a lot more if the creeps are very high. Um, some of the backs are quite hollow. So it's definitely a challenge. Um, he is not built for dressage in the slightest. He's, he's like a giraffe. His neck is six feet long as it is. Um, but over time, he's really learned to contain himself to go slower and not go as fast as he used to. Although he still likes to do it every now and again. Um, but yeah, it's difficult, but they can do it. We're proof of that. <laughs> Absolutely, and the thoroughbreds, they're so intelligent and yeah. they learn things quite quickly. They're like sponges, aren't they? Once they get the hang of things, did he adapt to the dressage world quite easily? He did. The strangest thing is, all the dressage training he found really easy. He's so trainable. His mind is just 
OK, I know what you want me to do now, so I'll do it. And then he remembers. The problem I have is just getting on. <laughs> when I first got him, it took four people just to get me on him because he was so foot in, we're going. And it took a long time, even now. I do very, if I'm in a car park ready for a competition, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Mountain block. Steady. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think for him, just because he was in the racing industry for so long, there's certain things that he just can't get out of his routine or out of his mind. And I'm sure there's ways he train it out of them, but I've never found it. Um, so we work around it. But actual dressage training, I can't fault him. He's been brilliant, but we've had a lot of help. It wasn't me that got on him and thought, great, let's go. Um, we had a trainer down in Buckinghamshire, um, Louise Robson, who taught us everything that we know. And without her, I don't think we'd have got anywhere. But yeah, it's, um, it was definitely fun. So you had a fantastic career as a racehorse, winning over £50,000 in winnings. And I think what you've gone, to, you've gone to show that these horses are so versatile, they've got so much potential for so many disciplines in a second life. Yeah, I mean, I think horses, these horses can do anything they put their mind to. They're so athletic and they're so willing to learn. He can do anything that a cob can do, that a warm can do. Obviously, maybe not the leg row, but um, he, he can do whatever he puts his mind to. Um, and a lot of horses I've seen that are going to do show jumping, event trials, all sorts, and they're so successful. And often beating those that you would think would normally reign in that kind of environment. So they are so versatile and it's just lovely to see so many out racing doing fabulous jobs. Sovereign Debt, a name that plenty of you will know. A fantastic racehorse who won 15 of his 63 races. He was a multiple group winner and listed winner and he won in excess of £800,000. A son of Dark Angel who is now making an absolute splash on the show scene as a show horse. His most recent success of note was at the Great Yorkshire Show this year, something that takes a lot of doing. And he's a fantastic horse. You can see here how much he enjoys his second career. And I'm sure he's going to continue this success in the years to come. Yeah, we're doing really well with him. Um, we picked him up from Ruth Cars in the September. He ran last at Epsom and we picked him up at the beginning of September and we've had him since then. So. And the owners that had him when he was racing are still heavily involved yes, with his career now? Yes, they, sometimes Mr. Hames comes and we let Lady O'Reilly know all his results. So They follow his career closely. Yep, very closely. And what are some of, I mean, he's had loads of results with yourself. What are some of his highlights he's had? For Sharon, he's won the Goffs entry this year in the end of July, and he's just won Great Yorkshire, which was brilliant. He's qualified for Horse of the Year show this year as a racehorse, and only 12 go to Horse of the Year show, so it's a really great, prestigious final. And he's got loads of character about him. I remember him actually in his racing days. And how long did it take him to adapt to the showing, sort of the showing side of things? Well, I ride him for 10 minutes every day just to keep his routine going, but teaching him to canter on one rein was quite a challenge. <laughs> yeah, they're used to just going in a straight line, aren't they, most I, of the time? I did learn you don't smack him. <laughs> and did he pick up sort of going to shows and stuff? I'm guessing he thrived off going to the shows. Does he enjoy going out and about? Yeah, he loves it. It's took him a while to understand he's not coming off the lorry to go racing, but yeah, he loves it. He likes to go by himself though. He's better off going to a show by himself rather than with another one because he gets a bit attached to his friends on the lorry. But yeah, no, he's a poser. He goes in the ring and says, look at me. Yeah. So. And recently, I think it was last week, was it? He's won two classes quite recently as well. Yeah, he won Ashbourne on Saturday and Staffs County on Wednesday, which are really good ROR classes, which are sponsored by our ROR and that, you know, it's really nice classes to win. So. And I'm guessing you're just going to carry on while he's enjoying it, carry on the showing and hopefully keep qualifying for these finals. Yeah, hopefully. Um, He'll just do 10 minutes a day now through to Horse Year Show. He won't go out again now before Horse Year Show, which is beginning of October. And then we'll carry on through the winter. I might even brave a bit of dressage on him yet. I don't know. But yeah, no, hopefully he'll be back next year and loving the job still and going even better. Well, he looks fantastic. And we know that these horses have so much potential to have second careers once their racing comes to an end. And he's just an absolute credit to yourselves and hopefully he carries on his success in the future. Thank you very much. Hopefully, hopefully, but the amount of food he has, <laughs> he costs us a fortune. Grated apples, grated carrots every night into his tea. He's spoiled, absolutely pampered. He deserves it. Yeah, too right. <laughs> so that's it for this week's episode. I hope it's given you at home an insight into these wonderful horses and how versatile they are to go on to have second careers after their time on the racetrack comes to an end. Thank you for watching. Thank you to everyone who's let us visit their yard and these wonderful horses. 
and goodbye for now.